Hello everybody, it's Red Panda Gamer here for another exciting episode of Let's Play Shovel Knight. Uh, in the last episode, we went through the- well, we learned about who Shovel Knight is and his troubled past of losing Shield Knight. We went through the plains, and we checked out the village, got a fishing hook, got a chalice, and today, we're gonna go to Pride Moor Keep, the lair of King Knight. Which is a really strange name, but okay. So let's get shoveling. Oh god, I love the sky in this level. I don't know what it is, it's just the purples and that, like, I, I guess it's like a greenish blue? It just looks gorgeous. Um, so we have- oh. I didn't realize that was a pitfall. <laughs> okay, that was totally my bad. Well, there you go. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this before, but there are no lives in this game. Uh, but you do have your money, which you obviously don't want to lose. Uh, but we're, we're okay. I mean, I'd rather die that early in the game than later. But that's probably not a great start to this. So here we get introduced to a new enemy. They're like these, uh, jousting horse things. We also have these new, uh... Traps, I guess is what you'd call them, and they just kind of dump boiling hot lava down on top of you. The cool thing about those, like, joust horses is that you can just jump over them, and whenever they end up hitting the wall, you can just get around them. Um, so you kind of have to be a little bit slower. I mean, like, I was trying to speed run through this game a little bit when I was playing it before, uh, and it's totally possible. Like, just like an older game, you can totally just sprint through it, but... I'm not necessarily at that point yet, but maybe, hey, maybe I'll do a run down the road, or maybe I'll do a versus with somebody else who does a Let's Play of this, I don't know. Um, so you see that, like, shimmering glitter down there? If we go ahead and use our, uh, fishing pole, fish down there, and we pulled up a golden fish! So that is one of the best uses of that to get some extra money. Uh, there will also come a point later where you can do something pretty interesting with it, but I don't want to spoil that, because it's kind of funny when it happens. So we get introduced to another enemy, probably one of the funniest looking enemies in the whole game. Just rats that have like helicopters on them. I don't really understand how they operate, but they're just kind of a silly looking enemy. And some of the enemy design in this game is pretty funny, and that's actually something I really like about the game too. But this game has a good sense of humor. Like not enough game, like if you ask me my favorite games, almost always like on that list will be games that are funny. Uh, or I usually am like the opposite, like either a game that's really funny or tells a really serious story. Um, like, games like Earthbound and Psychonauts are hilarious, and then games like The Last of Us or Gone Home tell, like, really mature, important stories about growing and stuff like that. But I, I will almost always prefer a funny game. Like, South Park Stick of Truth, that shit was hilarious. I loved that game. Uh, so if we come over here, we can get ourselves a giant turkey. Or a chicken, I don't know. And we can destroy the heads of those. So this is something I was mentioning in the last episode. These are checkpoints, like I said, but something you can do you'll see in a minute, is you can destroy them and get a bunch of money for them. 210 gold is actually kind of a lot, but now we run the risk of dying and having to start all over. Uh, I am I was trying to decide if I actually wanted to take the risky route in destroying the checkpoints for this Let's Play, because I don't want to have to edit out a bunch of stuff if I do die. Uh, but, you know, honestly, when you if you die and have to start over, the nice thing is, any secrets you've found, or any like, uh, all the gold you've already gotten, it doesn't really matter. You, you, can't, you can't get it again, so you just kind of have to run through it. So, I'll probably continue to destroy the checkpoints, at least in the early game, so I can get a lot of money for the early start of it. But I'm sure once I get a little bit further, uh, I might be a little more cautious about that. And actually, I screwed this up just now, so let me go ahead and walk off screen and back on screen. What they want you to do here is to, or maybe I'm wrong. Oh wait, yeah, I am wrong. That's not until later in this little section. Oh, and spikes are instant kill, by the way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Spikes will kill you instantly, so don't fall on them. But in, oh, give me that. But you also get invincibility frames when you take damage. So this is one of the, the first kind of challenging puzzles or platforming like sections that you do in the game. At least that's what I think. Um, if you come over here and stand there, but it's not bad as long as you watch the timing and don't panic. Uh, you'll be fine. So if you stand there long enough, it'll kind of take you behind the secret door. And uh, that's good, because I like secret doors. Um, but I also like gold. So if we go ahead and jump across these, and then we open this, we get a man! So this is Chester, in the village, or out in the field. I have all the deals. You're not gonna believe what I just found in this chest. Wanna see? 
So I think this is kind of funny. It's implying that, you know, he found the chest. He got to the chest before you, and now he is selling you the treasure that he found. Uh, but that's, you know, the other way you get items. Uh, so he gives us the flare wand. So this is our first actual projectile. Um, if we would have bought the green orb, that would have been our other first one, but it's totally fine. We'll buy it later. Uh, there's really no need for it this early in the game. In fact, I rarely even use our alternative weapon, uh, but it's still good to have. Um, oh wait, I need to go the other way. So there you go. So that's not much of a se like there. That's the thing. There's a lot of secrets in this game, like hidden blocks you have to bait, break your way through. But then there's also just a lot of you know areas where like, hey, here's a difficult platforming section, and if you do it, you'll be rewarded. And we were rewarded with a new power-up, and that's the only place you can get that, too. And as we get further, there will be different types of weapons we can only get from that. Another thing you can do uh, with the shovel is you can bounce back uh, projectiles. Uh, at least that projectile. I don't know how many more you can do. So we can go ahead and do this little detour over here, I believe. This is where I start to have trouble remember, like figuring out where I'm exactly supposed to go. I think, okay, that just takes, okay, so I'm gonna run in here real quick and just do this and then we'll uh, backpedal a little bit. Uh, but, oop, didn't need to do that. That was the fire wand. I mean, I was gonna use it eventually, I just didn't need to use it yet. So we'll just go through this way now. And I broke the other check. So like right now, if I died, I would literally have to start all over. Uh, which, like I said, isn't that bad considering the fact that I don't need to worry about secrets or doing that extra platforming spot. Uh, but in general, it does take up a lot of time. And then you also run the risk of dying, like, somewhere along the way. Oh, wait, I fucked this up. Oops. Uh, you also risk dying along, like, uh, as you're on your way back, which would be a huge... God damn it, I can't believe I messed that up. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes this game can be a little unforgiving with you forgetting to do certain secrets. But that would have just taken us above the castle wall, which I don't really remember if there's any benefit. So we have this uh, griffin here. Oh, God, don't die. Let me jump across. And the most important thing with this enemy is you just remember his pattern that he throws out there. And this is a good spot to use the flare wand, but I don't really need to. You can also use the shovel. And there we go. Easy enough. And they fully recover your health and they give you a couple of pots of magic, but not enough to restore it. So you don't necessarily want to use all your magic on one boss, because they're not guaranteeing... They don't guarantee giving it all back. I'm going to wait for this mouse to come over here. Something else I like about this game, and this is more just speaking to retro games in general, like just comparing them, uh, I really like this game that this game doesn't have a time limit. Uh, I always thought it was dumb in Mario games uh, that they had time limits. I just thought it was weird. Like, I ne Mostly because I never felt like they actually affected me. Like, I never felt like I was actually going to run out of time in a Mario game, and as far as I can think, I never have, unless maybe I was looking for a secret. And speaking of secrets... Booyah! I wasn't able to get to this the first time I played it because I totally, I couldn't get that jump right, like jumping across those rats. Um, so we'll just go ahead and come down here, make short work of these guys. But yeah, I mean, even though you can reflect their magic, I do find it easiest just to kind of uh, run up to them and shovel them to death. And then you can see that little block right there, that gets us to a $50 gem, or diamond, blood diamond. And there we go. And then this leads us to a chest. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some magic there so that it doesn't go to waste. And we get a bunch of gold! Huzzah! So there you go, nice little secret that you might have missed. But almost any time that you have like a trail of enemies that could potentially lead you up above, like a part of the level, you could pretty much assume that it leads to a secret. Like it's pretty obvious. Uh, at least, you know, I think it is. But, like, you know, that also comes from a different mentality, like a different generation of games. Like, if you play 3D games a lot, like, you know, modern 3D games, not a lot of those have, like, specific secrets. But, like, if you come from, like, the 90s or early 2000s of gaming, and you, you know, you're totally... Ah, oh, shit, I messed this up. Damn it. Oh, well. We just can't get to that other diamond now. Oh, well. It's not much. It's 50, I think. So these enemies are, like, I really like the enemies that actually, like, react to your moves. So he won't just let you jump on him. But what you can do is you can jump on him and then go down below and stab at him. But it's cool, you know, it teaches you that, hey, just because you had a super easy time with some enemies does not mean we're going to be that easy on you. 
Like, this game really does require you to learn, but it's not so, like, difficult to where it's just like, ah, you're terrible. Alright, so this, I actually don't necessarily want to break, but this one's also worth more. So I'm going to anyway. And this leads us over here, which I think I actually died here the first time I played this level. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. There is a page of music, and the reason I died is because of these stupid flying things. Because if they get you from the right angle, then, you know, they can just get you pretty easily. I want that. And like I said, I get I get very, uh, I get, get ADD about, the, or ADHD really, or not ADHD. It's the wrong thing. I get very, I don't want, I don't even want to say, uh, what I'm trying to, what am I, what am I trying to say right now? Oh, God, it's obsessive compulsive. I was trying to think of OCD, but I was also trying to think of the whole thing. But I'm not going to say that because I kind of hate when people just use OCD as a adjective. But whatever. So this is uh, how we get to different gear. Uh, we just hit the select button and you can check out the rest of your stuff. Um, and you can also see that you actually have like shovel blade and your stalwart plate. But that's not important. Uh, but we'll go ahead and grab our fishing rod because we have some more sparkly ground. And we will see... Oh my god, it's Trouple! Wait, don't eat me, Knight! The Trouple King commands me to share his bounty with you! All hail the Trouple King, the king of fish and fruit! Long may his stem grow! Sweet, so we got the Ikor of Boldness, or Ikor of Boldness? Become invincible for 10 seconds. Great for those tough spots. So that is a, I believe, that's, I don't think we get to keep that item. I think that's a one-time use thing, so I'm not gonna, not gonna use that. I think it's a one-time use thing. I'm almost positive it is. But we essentially get, that is what our uh, chalice became, I believe, the one that we bought. Um, if you don't have the chalice, then you can't actually get anything from that guy. Um, so we need to time this perfectly here. I didn't really say what was going on, but it was kind of obvious. When you open these books, it creates these other books to become platforms for you. And they made it difficult by putting lava pits everywhere. Oh no! Oh my god, I have to start this whole level over again now. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, all right, well I'm gonna have to cut out. Uh, I'm not gonna make you sit and watch the whole level all over again. But yeah, as you'll see, you know, enemies aren't worth gold anymore, so I'll just have to run through it. Uh, but I will be back in a second. Okay, so there are some benefits to dying, uh, like, there are some benefits to having to start all the way back over, because then you get an opportunity to go back through and maybe get some of the treasures you missed. Uh, because, you know, sometimes if you destroy an enemy you weren't actually supposed to destroy, or you just completely missed out on a jump because you didn't think that that was even coming. Uh, like, I didn't even know there was that second treasure chest there from the first time I did this. So, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world that I died when I did, without any checkpoints, because now I was able to just go all the way back through to get the stuff that I missed. Uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and finish this stuff up. Ah, oh, damn it. Alright, so I wasn't able to get all the treasure, unfortunately. Um, it probably evens out, though, with the fact that I was able to get more. Uh, but it does kind of suck when you're not able to get all your stuff back. But hey, that's that's kind of the thing. It's only, That's the way the game kind of punishes you, is if you die at a hard part, then you're not... It's going to be difficult to get through it still, and it's going to be difficult to get the money you lost. Um, but yeah, I mean, that only took, like, that took me, like, a fourth of the time, maybe, to get back to where I needed to be. But that's the other thing, too, is you, you get used to the level design and where everything is, and you can skip enemies much... I mean, a lot of these enemies you can just skip. Not the, this guy, obviously, but... You can skip a lot of those knights that uh, block your attacks, as I tried to show. Uh, so, I'm gonna destroy this one, because why not? <laughs> uh, but this is the boss fight! King Knight. An interloper is in our midst! Be gone from our throne room, knave! I'm no more an intruder than you. You aren't even a real king! Oh, but you're mistaken! The Enchantress saw me for my fabulously regal self, and now all bow before me. You're not but a decadent dandy. Prepare to taste justice. Shovel justice. 
Silence! <laughs> so yeah, the writing is really, really funny. I, I, I like it a lot. So this fight is a tad more difficult than the fight with the Dark Knight or the Black Knight or whatever it was called. Oh no, I didn't even know that could happen. Uh, I didn't even see that attack the first time I fought this guy. Um, so he's got a lot more health and he's got a much larger bag of tricks than the other knight did. Um, and then he also has this move where he makes horns come by and creates confetti that can actually hurt you. Uh, but it's easy enough to dodge. Uh, the problem is dodging it and dodging his attacks. But usually if you can pogo on top of him, you're okay. But also remember to use your magic. I mean, you can finish him off really quickly if you do. Like that. So there you go. Get the point. Ah. So success. You know, this is definitely one of the easiest levels in the game. Uh, the game gets a lot harder from here on out. Uh, but I'm, I'm ready for the challenge, you know? So go ahead and rest, Shovel Knight. You did a great job. He earned it. You'd think that for all his good doing and all the gold he's gotten, that he could probably buy himself a place in town, but uh, whatever. Probably best to not put too much thought into it. Uh, so always remember to, to put out your fire. You'd hate to cause a forest fire. That'd be awful, you know? It'd be terrible. What kind of hero would we be if we caused a forest fire? So we t retook Pride More Keep. And uh, another element of Super Mario 3 is now there is an enemy on the map and we can walk over to him and that starts a unique fight where we can get more treasure and we can just kinda hone our skills a little bit more. But yeah, like I said, this game really does take a lot of inspiration from, no, you oh, I thought I was gonna fall for sure. Uh, this game does take a lot of inspiration from Mario 3. And I mean, not even Mario 3, all of the older games. But they take inspiration in all the right ways. Oh God, I got that treasure chest invincibility. And there we go. But you get a lot of gold from doing this stuff, so I definitely don't recommend skipping it. But I think if you die, I'm not sure what happens when you die in those stages. Luckily, I have not died in those. Uh, so let's go ahead and head back into the village, uh, go see the king, and see what he has to say now that we've beaten... Oh, and we can also talk to the bard. Oh, you have a music sheet! Please accept 500 gold as a reward. So we gave him the decadent dandy, which is the king knight theme. You wouldn't believe how many revisions King Knight demanded. He's what we call a nightmare client. That is, that is a great pun. Uh, all right, so we can go ahead and come back to the town. We might want to buy some more health. We don't have to, uh, but I also definitely want to buy uh, that other magic spell. King Knight reigns. Oh wait, what's the voice I had for this guy? I don't even remember. King Knight, uh, King Knight reigns no more. Huzzah! Now I can rule Pride more. Hurrah! I can't wait to greet old Plume and Beaky. They probably can't wait to see me. So I think it's implying that, that those are the names of the, the griffins we destroyed, which is kind of funny in itself. So we should also go ahead and buy another chalice. That way when we run into the triple, uh, any triple followers will be prepared. And then we can also go ahead and bl bly. <laughs> we can buy the Chaos Sphere, which is a really good attack. Um, essentially, what it does is, unlike the flame wand that just shoots projectiles forward, it actually bounces around. And uh, it can do damage to multiple enemies rather than just hit one enemy and disappear. Which is good. And it doesn't do damage to us, most importantly, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, so we can go ahead and talk to the Gotician again. We could buy... Well, I'd rather have more magic, I think, than buy more health, because I rarely have a problem with running out of health. So we'll get more magic, and then we'll also run over here to refill our magic. I mean, magic gets dropped so often in the game, it's usually not an issue, but I like to just make sure I have full magic before leaving the town. So yeah, guys, that's going to be all for this episode of Shovel Knight. I hope you're enjoying the series. Be sure to comment down below what you're thinking about it. Tell me one of your favorite comedy games. You know, I talk a lot about how I really enjoy funny games. So feel free to comment down below what you think one of the funniest games out there is. I'd love to read about it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.